here we go for our practice test answers. Biggest thing I want to warn you about is you need to read directions carefully. Um, this first question, if you just look at it, hey, it says take some limits, but the directions say we need to do it by creating a table of relevant values. So, um, go ahead and do that. I'm approaching zero from the right, so my table of values is going to be um, approaching from the right. So I'm going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So there's my four X's. Um, I'm going to do two things here, and then I'm going to over X. Absolute value of 4X would be 0.4. 0.4 divided by 0.1, which is multiplying by 10, which is 4. This is going to be 0.04. 4 divided by 0.01 is again 4. 004, 4, 0, 0, 4, 4. My answer is. Okay. Um, for the this one, I'm approaching zero um, from both sides. Key warning on this question is: break function sh should be evaluated in radians mode. Um, so I'm approaching zero from both sides. So from the left. Negative point zero zero one, and from the right, point one point zero one zero one zero zero one, and another key point on the directions here: our function values should be correct to five decimal places. So I am actually going to use the calculator. Make sure I am in radians mode. I'm going to do the sine, put it in fractions, sine, five times negative point, close, over three, negative point one, that's five decimal places, so I'm actually going to go to Fixed mode, so I can just write down everything that's on there. And first part, I get 1.5989. Can't see the calculator, I'm sorry. Then I'm just going to go up, and reason I, I am going to... Uh, just going to be changing values and what I had already typed in. Insert a zero there. 1.66597. Edit, add zeros. Zero. Zero. 1.66666. Add one more zero there. Search. Zero. This is 1.66667. I'm going to do the same thing from the right. Original. Uh, look at this. 
1.66597. Um, add one more zero. I'm going to bet you I'm going to get the five sixes here. Zero. I can insert zero. 1.5 sixes. Six, 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 seven. Well, six repeating, you should remember, is two thirds. At seven is because of the sixes repeating. So I end up with one and two thirds, which is five thirds. Which, okay, I did need a table of values to create these functions. But um, we did several homework questions where we had this limit as it approached zero of sine of 5x over 3x. And we knew that we could get the final answer would be the 5 thirds. So you can go ahead and use your regular limit rules to check to see the answer. Make sure you give me a table of values. Okay, next uh, limits. This one says, determine the limits by using rules of algebra to simplify the expression. Make sure to use correct notation, which means I gotta carry that limit through with everything. For the first one, I am going to um, try to factor the top limit. X approaches four. The top, two numbers that multiply to negative eight that add to negative two would be X minus four. And X plus two. Okay, these cancel. I now have the limit as X approaches four, just X plus two. And now I can actually do the direct substitution. I'm going to put the 4 in for x. I'm going to get 6. Okay. The next one. First part of algebra I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide everything by h. Just going to leave me with the limit. h approaches 0 of h squared minus 6h 6. I can now let h go to 0, which is going to give me 3 times h squared minus 6 times 0. 6 is just 6. Um, 9 minus 9, yes, I'm going to get 0 on the bottom. First thing I want to do is I want to factor the top and the bottom. Okay, for the top, two numbers that multiply to negative 6 that add to negative 5. Okay, negative 6 and 1. So the way I'm going to do this is, hey, it's a minus 6 over 2. And then the minus a uh, plus one over two. I'm going to simplify this to give me x minus three. X approaches right. X minus three. This one doesn't simplify, so I'm going to bring that two in front. Two x plus one. Bottom would be x minus three x plus 2, 
minus threes cancel. That's just going to give me the limit as x approaches three from the right. Two x plus one over x plus two. I can now do the substitution. I have two times three plus one over three plus two is six plus one is seven over five. All right, it looks like I had a little bit of the work off the top of the screen. All right, factor top and bottom canceled out the x minus threes. Right at what it looked like after canceling. I can do. Okay, D. Um, in order to do D, which will take us back to question one, part two, we need to remember the following limits. Limits as X approaches zero of X over X equal to one. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make it look like that. So I'm going to write this as the limit. X approaches zero. So this is the, not just an X, it's the limit of the sine of something divided by that stuff. So here, what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, multiply this sine of two X by two X over two X. That's going to give me 2x sine of x, uh, sine of 2x over 2x. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to multiply the bottom by 5x over x, 5x sine of x over x. These x's are going to cancel out here. I'm going to bring it two fifths out to the left. I take the limit. X approaches zero. Now I have the sine of 2x over 2x all over the sine of 5x over 5x. Both of these limits approach one. They give me two fifths times one, which is just. And the last one, let me rearrange the desk a little bit so I can. So the last one, I'm, as x approaches 2, let's just do a quick check. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Not yet. Get 0 over 0. So look at this. The top. The top was, let's just say, x squared minus 9. I would be able to factor it into x plus times x minus. Well, I can still do the factoring. Except it's going to be x plus 1 plus 3 and x plus 1 minus 3. But let's write that out. I'm going to get equals the limit. x approaches 2 of x plus 1 plus 3. x plus 1 minus 3 over x minus Okay, well, this is x plus 4. This is x minus 2. x minus 2's cancel. I'm now left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 4. And now take that limit by putting a 2 in, 2 plus 4, and then.
Done with problem two. Problem three. It says use one of the limit definitions. Oh uh, no, problem three. But f of x be the function where f of 2 is 12. So that means I know that I have the point 2 comma 12 on the graph. And the derivative at 2 is negative 3. Write the equation of the tangent line. Slope, negative 3. Write the equation of the tangent line where h equals 3. We're going to use the point slope form. And then we're going to turn it into slope in. So I'm going to use i 12 equals negative 3 x. I'm going to distribute i minus 12 equals negative 3x plus 6. Add the 12 to both sides. I get y equals negative 3x. Now, Use one of the limit definitions of the derivative, your choice, to determine the derivative. When done, also find derivative evaluated at 3 and the equation of the line tangent be negative 1. Limit definitions are listed below. I am going to be using the second one. Um, you can use the First one, actually, the first one would probably be easiest here because we're doing it at a single point. So it says the limit is x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. A, in our case, is going to be equal to... We are going to write that our derivative is equal to the limit x approaches f of x minus f of a f of 3 all over x. Well, f of x is easy. That's just going to be limit x 3. f of x is easy. That's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 8. Well, my f of 3, put a 3 in here, it's going to be 9 minus 18 plus 8, not plus 18, plus 8. So negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. I'm going to be subtracting a negative 1, which means adding for x minus. Um, limit as x approaches 3. This is a plus 9. So this is actually x minus 3 times x three for x three. Let's cancel. I can't, that gives me the limit. Equals the limit. x approaches 3 x minus 3, which I can now do 3 minus 3, and get this did it. Actually, I did more work than I was supposed to here. This answer is 0. I was actually supposed to do I had plugged the 3 in early. I'm going to redo this part on the green piece of paper really quick. I have the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. My f of x, I have the limit as x approaches a. f of x is x squared minus 6x plus 8 minus f of a. So 
So that would be minus a squared plus 6a. Um, that would be minus 8 over x minus Um, I should not have used that definition. So, I'm going to use the one I would normally use. We're going to get the same answer we did before. I'm going to do limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Limit h approaches zero. is equal x plus h squared minus 6 times x plus h plus 8 minus my original function minus x squared plus x minus 8 all over h limit h approaches 0 have the limit h approaches zero of x squared minus two x h plus h squared minus x six h plus this x plus six eight all over h x squareds cancel. Six X's cancel, eights cancel. Every term has an H left in it. Um, so what I can do is I can get rid of an, one H out of everything. I get rid of an H out of here. I get rid of an H out of here. Get rid of one of those H's, get rid of that H. So my derivative is the limit h approaches 0, negative 2x plus h minus 6. Now I'm going to let the h go to 0. It's going to give me negative 2x derivative is equal to 2x 6. Okay, I showed you one way that we already got the f prime of 3. Well, now I can just put the 3 in here. 2, 3. How did I get a negative 2x? Oh, it's this is supposed to be a plus a 2x. X. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay. I know I did a lot of extra work. Big thing is here, it says use one of the limit definitions to determine. Oh, again, we can go back and check our work by using just the power rule. I have x squared minus 6x plus 8. Prime of x would be 2x. Minus six. You can always go back and check your. Now it wants the equation of the tangent line. Well, here's my point. Slope is zero. So um, we we've got. I gave you the equation in the previous problem. I minus then x. Well, let's look here. If this is zero. This whole side is zero, which means I have a, basically, I have a horizontal line. I want the equation of a horizontal line that goes through negative one. Let's look here. If I put a minus one here, that's actually y plus one, zero, i equal. 
Sorry about the mess up on that problem. I would recommend you use this. Um, use that definition. Um, to do the f of x, f of x plus h. And now we get to the easy part. Is use the graph of the function. Answer the questions below. Write the D and E if it does not exist. To keep the graph up there, it says list the x values on the interval negative six to six for which f of x is discontinuous. Well, it's discontinuous here at negative three. Discontinuous at zero. It is discontinuous at four. Okay. Now it says list the x values on the interval of negative five to five closed for which it is not differentiable. Okay, it is not differentiable at negative three. It is not differentiable at zero. But it is differentiable. Um, it is not, well, it's not differentiable at two because of a cusp, and it is not differentiable at, and because it's. Now, it wants some derivatives. Remember, the derivative is the slope of a curve at a point. Okay, so I want the derivative at five. I want the slope at equals five. Well that is negative three over two. I want the derivative at two. It does not exist. We said it was not differentiable. It's not differentiable because it has a cusp. I want the derivative as I approach negative three from the right. Approaching negative three from the right, my slope is becoming infinite. As I, as I approach four, okay, let's look at this. This slope is always negative three halves. This slope here, um, my tangent line is going flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter and approaching zero. Well, actually, um, so I have it approaching zero from the left, from negative three and a half from the right. So two different ones. I could have directly wrote it does not exist, as we already said. The Next one we're doing limit as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, this is not asking. Oh, second. This one was not asking us for a derivative. They're asking us for the limit of the limit at the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Be zero. limit as x approaches zero is going to be does not exist because it approaches two different values. Put these answers there so you can have H. Go to the next question. Let's use the graph. To sketch the graph of the derivative between negative four and negative two, slope is zero. Um, also zero between negative one. I've got these two regions taken care of. So this first area between negative six 
And four, my slope is two. And that gets us to the point is, hey, I have to have round dots. All these hollow dots. Slope is negative one between negative two and one. Slope here is negative two, and that goes all the way to four. Here, my slope is a positive. So, biggest point here is hollow dots. It says, give the units associated with the derivative. Remember, the derivative is a rate of change of is the. Uh, like feet per second type of thing. If I would have a graph of times, so let's look at this. If the X units are in feet. Y units has pounds. I want the change in Y over the change in X would be. The X unit has amps, Y unit has volts, F of X, okay. going to do volts, amps. and to the last page. Let's differentiate the following function. Clearly show your work using correct notation. Um, simplify if possible first. Actually, this should have been an F. So first thing I want to do before I do the derivative here, I don't want to use the quotient rule. I want to simplify first. First thing I'm going to do is simplify. I have x cubed minus x squared x. That means f prime of x and use the power rule squared next one it says f of t equals e to the 2t plus 6 e to the t plus 5 i'm going to kind of say x is equal to e to the t rewrite this really quick f of x I have f of x. I rewrite that. This would give me x squared plus 6x plus 5 over x plus 2. I just want to see, I wanted to see if there's anything I can do to factor it first. In this case, I'm not able to. I think on your test, you are going to be. Um, I think what I did is I goofed up. I should have put the 5 here in this. This would be x plus 2, x plus 5, x plus 1, 2. I just wanted to do that to see if I could cancel out anything. I think on your test, you actually can. That didn't do me any work, so now I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. Quotient rule, 2 over b, low, b high. I to t prime. So prime of t is the denominator. The t plus two times the derivative of the numerator. Um, this is going to be two e to the two t. Plus six e to the t plus zero minus the numerator e minus e to the two t 
plus 6 e to the t, plus 5, times the derivative of the denominator, derivative of the denominator, the t, all over e to the t plus 2, squared. Now again, if something would have canceled here, the top and the bottom, I would have just been left with a single term on the top and would have been straightforward. Okay, this is e to the x times the square root of x. That is a power rule problem. A product rule problem. So that is equal to the so product rule equal to first function times the derivative of second plus the second function times the derivative of first. I'm going to take the first function to the x. Square root of this would be one over two of x. That's the first part. Take the square root of x times the derivative of this, which is just going to be self e to the x. I end up with e to the x to root x plus. I'm going to do some factoring here. x cubed plus 1 equal to x plus 1 x squared plus x copy chain so i am going to get i do some canceling and then i'm going to do um, so this x plus one here to cancel that one i'm going to be left with x equaling x squared minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. I'm going to use the quotient rule. Low d high i squared. Bottom one, x squared minus x plus 1 times the derivative of the top, which I, I minus x squared minus 1, derivative of the bottom, which is x minus 1, all over squared, which is x squared minus x plus 1. Hey, okay, do not have to simplify that. You're done. Next one is a product rule. First function times the second plus the second function. First function, the derivative of the second. The derivative of the first part is e to the x. The derivative of the second part is cosine x. Plus the second function. Times the derivative of the first, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And um, we're done because the direction said do not simplify. And the last one, I have to use the quotient rule. Low, I, I, O, there, bottom, derivative of the top, derivative of sine of x is x. Derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, so negative times that negative becomes minus top function x squared x times the derivative of the bottom, which is x, all over the squared, which would be x.
So if I would not have taken all that extra time on that second problem, and the way I did them during class, definitely would have taken less than one class period. Um, you get two class periods to work on it. Um, but again, your test is very similar to this. All I did is I took your test and I just changed a bunch to come up with this. Um, be good to go.